Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is the ASVAB Arithmetic Reasoning Practice Test, a midterm for the Foundations of Math course. I did the first eight problems in a previous video. I'll put a link to that in the description. As I work my way through this test, I'm also going to refer to the chapter I covered the idea on. So on this problem right here, number nine, um, this is a probability problem. I cover that in chapter nine, statistics and probability. There's a link to that chapter in the description, and this is kind of the midterm exam. This is not the actual ASVAB arithmetic reasoning test. This is just practice problems to prepare you for it. Um, there's a lot of sections on the ASVAB. I'm only going over arithmetic reasoning and then mathematical knowledge. Uh, only two of those sections is because I teach math and SOP, and that's my strength. If you have any questions at all on these videos, please uh, comment below and ask your questions, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can on that. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. What I would do here is print out this document, do it ahead of me with the video paused, and then unpause the video and watch how I do it. So go ahead and pause the video now, print out this doc, and start working on it. So my strategy here is to mark up the test as much as I can, write out all the key ideas, um, and then see if I can eliminate any answers, being really conscientious not to make any careless mistakes. So a bag contains 105, jelly beans 23 are white, 23 are red, 14 are purple, 26 yellow, and 19 green. So that's pretty much the whole problem. They all add up, they say to 105. If I had time, I would double check that, but I really don't want to spend too much time on any one problem. What is the probability of selecting either a yellow or green jelly bean? So it's either yellow or green. Remember the probability is the vent uh, of what it is over the total. So it's either yellow or green. I'm going to add those together. Um, 30, 45, 45 out of 105, out of the total number of jelly beans. So I don't see that answer there, so I'm going to have to reduce that fraction. Let's see, 15 will go into both these numbers. 15 goes into here three times. What would that be? Yeah, seven times. So that's three-sevenths. And I look over here, and here's my answer, three-sevenths. There it is right there. All right, problem number 10. This is from Chapter 5, Ratios. A can contains 200 mixed nuts, almonds, cashews, and peanuts. If the probability of choosing an almond is 1 in 10, and the probability of choosing a cashew is 1 in 4, how many peanuts are in the can? So we've got to, know how, we've got to figure out that fraction. So with this fraction right here, we're going to have to have a common denominator. The only numbers that 4 and 10 go into are 40. So I'm going to multiply this by 4 over 4. That'll give me 4 40 -ths. I'm going to multiply this by 10 over 10 to give me 10 40 -ths. And then all three of these things added together has to be 40 40 -ths, the full amount. So I'm going to take 40 40 -ths minus that 14 40 -ths, and that'll give me 26 40 -th, Right. So the number of peanuts is 26 40 -ths of the total. Um, and there are 200 total um, nuts in there. So I'm going to take that 200, multiply it by that fraction. It's 26 over 40. I could reduce it, but I don't have to. 40 goes into 200 five times, so it goes in there five times into itself once. So I have 5 times 26. 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 6 is 30. So the answer is 130. It's a little pretty hard problem. There's my answer right there. Okay, this is problem number 11 from Chapter 4, Percentages. You use a $100 bill to buy a fax machine. It costs $60 plus 8% on that $60. So I could write that out, or I know that 8% is 0 0.08. And I could just take that 8 times 60 to get 48. 48 is obviously not, you know, I'm looking for a number for place value pretty close. 10% would be 6, so a little under $6. So 48, it would be $4.80, would make sense, plus the 60. So that would give me 64.80 is the total amount of the item and the tax. And then I have to subtract that from the $100 bill. So I got $100 and zero cents minus 64.80. I want to subtract here. Um, I can't do the zeros minus 80, so I got to borrow $1 from here to make this $99. 
and this is 100 cents, right? $99, 100 cents, same as 100 bucks. 100 minus 80 is 20 cents. 99 minus 64 is 5, 35, 20. And there's the amount of change left right there, 35, 20. Problem number 12 from chapter two, fractions. Um, purchased a large bag of apples. Half of them were to make applesauce. So half went to applesauce. Of those she left, she used three quarters to make pie. Of the half, she used three quarters to make pie. So this amount is a half times three quarters. The way I multiply fractions, just multiply across the top to get three, multiply across the bottom to get eight. And then I'm actually gonna convert this into a common denominator. So one half in eights, I'm gonna multiply by four over four to get four eights. So this one's four eights for sauce, three eights for pie. How many apples were there to begin with? So we know we have one eighth of the total here. That's gonna add up to one. When she was finished, she only had three apples left. So that means that one eighth and three are equal. So if one eighth is three, then I gotta find the total amount. So I'm gonna multiply that three by eight to get 24, right? So there's my answer B right there, 24. And that kind of makes sense. There's one eighth of them left after the pie and the sauce. An eighth of them are three. An uh, eighth of 24 is three. So that's where that comes from. Okay, problem uh, number 13 here. This is from chapter four, percentages. 80 of the employees on the crew, 35% worked overtime. This week, how many employees did not work overtime? So I could figure out 35% of 80 and then subtract that from 80. Or I could just figure out uh, what percent did not work overtime, multiply that by 80. That might be a better way to do it. So 100 minus 35 is 65%. So 65% did not. So I want to find 65% of 80. So I'm going to start with 80 here. Convert this into a decimal 0.65. Even before I do this, let me just take a look at some of these answers. If I could figure it out. Six, you know, half of 80 is 40. Um, but it's a fair bit more than that. So this is really about the only one to cross out. If I had a guess, I'm going to guess between C and D. Um, let's go ahead and start multiplying this out. 5 times 0. 5 times 8 is 40. Placeholder, 0. Um, 48. Let me add those together. 0, 0, 12. Carry the 1. 52. My decimal place is over 1, 2. So I go over 1, 2. And my answer is 52. You can tell this is a natural, what they call distractor. Um, 52 and 28 gives you 80, right? And that's the number um, that did work over time. So if you had done that and then forgot to subtract it, you would have got it wrong. They deliberately do that. It's really almost reading comprehension uh, to make sure you pick up the right words. All right, problem number 14. This is from chapter eight, introduction to algebra. Her height is two over A, and Francine is B inches tall. So this is Lydia's height. Lydia's height is a proportion of Francine's height. Francine's height is B, so I just take this and multiply it by B, and then that just gives me two B over A, uh, and there's my answer right there, answer D. Okay, problem number 15 is from chapter seven, um, area, perimeter, and volume, a triangle. Let's create a triangle, it has an area of nine. Its base is three, what is its height? So I don't know what that is, but I know base times height divided by two is equal to area, area is equal to nine. A little bit of algebra here, I'm gonna solve that equation. Two times nine is 18. So I have 18 is equal to three X. Getting that by itself, I divide both sides by three. X is equal to six, so the height is six. There's my answer right there. Let's just double check that. Three times six, 18 divided by two gives me an area nine. Okay, problem number 16, also chapter seven, area, perimeter, volume. What are the dimensions of a rectangular room with a perimeter of 42? So if it's uh, rectangular, that means that and that are the same. Twice, the long side is twice as long as the short side. So let me just glance through these answers. Every one of these is twice as long as the short side. So I can't cross any out. Let me just go through these really quick. Uh, the perimeter is 42. So I'm just going to take this times 2 and that times 2. Or I could just add those together, 21. 
times 2 is 42. There's my answer right there through a process of elimination. Okay, this is the last problem for arithmetic reasoning. The first half of this test is a separate previous video. Again, this is a foundations of math course. We're going to call this a midterm prepping you for the ASVAB math portion or any standardized math test. So problem number 17 here is also from chapter 7, perimeter area volume. We're going to kind of break this word problem down uh, into a picture. She has a fish tank, the shape of a cube. Let me draw out a cube. So cube has a depth. These are all the same. So whatever this is, this is, this is. So they all have to be the same. That's the definition of a cube. What is the area of one of the sides? Well, so for the, the volume to be a thousand, that means what? I mean, I'm looking for the cube root of a thousand. I'm just going to take guesses here. It's obviously going to be a 10. 10, 10, and 10 is going to give me a hundred, a thousand. So each side is, is 10. And then here's the key right here. What is the area of one of the sides? So it's easy to grab answer A, but you got to go back and read pretty carefully here. What is the area of one of the sides? Well, that's 10 times 10 or 100 square inches. So that's the correct answer there. Well, I sure hope this video has helped you work on your standardized math skills, prepped you for the ASVAB arithmetic reasoning. I'm going to do a few more chapters in that Foundations of Math um, course that I have all free online, all access in the description. And then the final exam will be the math knowledge for the ASVAB. So I'm hoping these help and I appreciate you watching. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and answer those as quick as I can.